Welcome to Literary Insights. Are you tired of your marketing efforts getting lost in the digital noise? Imagine transforming your content into a powerful tool that not only captures attention but also drives customer loyalty and skyrockets sales. In today's video, we dive into Joe Polizzi's groundbreaking book, Epic Content Marketing, How to Tell a Different Story, Break Through the Clutter, and Win More Customers by Marketing Less. Discover the secrets of creating content that your audience actually craves, and learn how to become the trusted expert in your industry. Ready to revolutionize your marketing strategy? Let's get started. The book provides guidance for effective content marketing strategies, frameworks, and tactics for both experienced marketers and those just getting started. Content marketing has evolved significantly in recent years with new social channels, technologies, business models, and the rise of the creator economy. The book covers foundational content marketing concepts in the first three parts, then dives deeper into topics like community building, emerging technologies, measuring success, and monetizing content businesses. Sections are aimed at both large brands scaling content and individual content entrepreneurs building personal brands. It addresses using skills and strategies at different levels. Readers are advised to focus first on understanding customers better rather than just promoting products slash services. Delivering the right content to the right audience is key. The book is written by Joe Polizzi, founder of Content Marketing Institute, and Brian Piper, a consultant and marketer who credits Polizzi's previous book with changing his career path to focus on content marketing. Content marketing involves creating and distributing valuable content to attract and engage an audience, with the goal of driving profitable customer actions. It's about informing or entertaining the audience without directly selling to them. Content marketing can take place across various channels like blogs, videos, newsletters, social media, events. But the focus is on driving the audience to take a desired action, not just promoting products slash services. Good examples of content marketing success stories include River Pools and Spas, which grew its business using a blog, and Sweet Farm, which launched a go-to meeting virtual program during COVID to educate and save its business. The key differences between content marketing and social media marketing are that content marketing's center of gravity is the brand's own website, while social media marketing operates within social networks. Content marketing has the goal of growing an engaged audience over the long term, while social media focuses more on short-term conversions and sales. Here is a summary of the provided text. The text discusses the differences between social media marketing and content marketing. Social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram a. Re better suited for short-form content and serving as distribution channels to drive traffic back to a brand's own website. Content marketing allows for longer-form content to be published directly on a brand's website in formats like blog posts, videos, and ebooks. Social media marketing focuses on goals like brand awareness and customer engagement, while content marketing emphasizes demand generation and lead-slash-subscriber growth by bringing prospects directly to a brand's site. While social media was an early step for brands to communicate directly with customers, content marketing requires brands to become true media publishers by producing high-quality, long-form content and building audiences on their own websites. This allows for deeper customer engagement and moving prospects farther down the sales funnel. The text frames social media marketing and content marketing not as separate strategies, but as interrelated parts of an ongoing evolution in online marketing as brands pioneer new ways to engage with customers without traditional media intermediaries. It emphasizes that content marketing strategies should come before social media strategies. Content marketing has been around for centuries but is more important than ever given the overload of marketing messages people are exposed to daily. Customers are selective and will engage with multiple pieces of content before making a purchase decision. Quality, relevant content is needed to cut through the clutter. With smartphone addiction so widespread, people are constantly consuming content on their mobile devices. This provides an opportunity for brands to deliver helpful, engaging content to their audiences. The book Get Content Get Customers argued that brands could and should deliver valuable content to prospects and customers to take on an important role in their lives, just as media companies do. Content marketing is a legitimate strategy for solving customer problems, entertaining, and informing them throughout the buying process. While still growing, more brands have adopted it in the last decade. Recent changes like the pandemic, remote work trends, and rise of content entrepreneurs have accelerated the need and opportunity for content marketing compared to traditional advertising alone. Media companies and brands have created more opportunities for content marketing at all levels due to technological and social changes. 
traditional barriers to content creation have been removed. Many journalists have left traditional media jobs to work in content marketing roles for brands. Social media has increased the need for brands to produce compelling content. Large tech companies are actively growing their own in-house media teams to connect with audiences and provide useful content. Every company can now become its own source of trusted information. Traditional media outlets have suffered declining ad revenues and rely more heavily on subscriptions and catering to social media. Many have reduced resources for original journalism. This has created openings for brands and entrepreneurs to fill local information needs. Surveys show people trust their employers and CEOs more than the media or government. Quality, credible content is important for building trust with audiences. All organizations now have opportunities to grow audiences and monetize them through content marketing. Media companies and content entrepreneurs are competing for audiences by creating valuable content on various platforms to attract readers, build loyalty, and drive business goals like leads and sales. For media companies, the business model relies on generating revenue directly from the content through paid subscriptions, advertising, or sponsorships. For non-media companies, the goal of content marketing is not direct revenue from the content, but to attract and retain customers to ultimately sell products slash services. The content supports the core business. The Tilt, Joe Polizzi's company, uses a hybrid model that employs content marketing tactics but also directly earns revenue from the content like a media company, through advertising, sponsorships, and paid courses slash events. Content marketing needs to be integrated into the overall marketing strategy rather than treated separately. It works best in combination with other tactics like advertising, PR, social media, etc. to promote the core business. Building the case for content marketing involves experiments, pilot programs, and demonstrating ROI, as innovation requires permission to potentially fail at first before refining the approach. Ongoing measurement is important to prove the value of content marketing. The key challenge that brands face is organizing and integrating all of their marketing efforts and customer experiences in a cohesive way. In the past, many brands did innovative projects in an uncoordinated manner, leading to mixed results. Now, the focus needs to be on developing strategic content operations, instituting content marketing as a unified function within the business, not just one-off campaigns. This involves successfully merging content strategy, governance and processes with content marketing teams to create valuable experiences. It also requires scaling this new operation efficiently. When making the business case, common objections like there is too much content already or that content marketing costs more need to be addressed. For the former, most brands actually create too many disjointed assets rather than too much overall content. A content strategy is needed to determine the right amount. For the latter, content marketing should not be seen as replacing paid media but rather integrating with it as part of an holistic marketing approach. The goal is to build a content product operation that enhances the entire customer experience and marketing mix. In summary, the key change needed is moving from disparate content projects to a cohesive operational mo. Dell that strategically plans and integrates all brand experiences and marketing efforts through valuable content products and experiences. Books? Love books? Dive into summaries, reviews, and deep dives of your favorite literary works with us. Thumbs up, like the video? Hit the like button. Bell, don't miss out. Subscribe and turn on notifications for more amazing content. Cheering megaphone, share your thoughts. Leave a comment below and let's discuss. Here are the key points from the summary. Amanda Todorovich started at Cleveland Clinic in 2013 to lead their health essentials blog and social media efforts. The blog was already getting around 250k monthly visits. She threw out their existing process of gathering topic requests from internal stakeholders and focusing more on understanding their audience and what they wanted to learn. This engaged the physicians more. Traffic grew rapidly under her leadership, hitting 1 million monthly visits after 6 months and 3 million after a year. Today the blog averages 10 to 13 million visits per month. As it grew, questions arose about how else they could leverage the content. This led Amanda to expand into new formats like podcasts, newsletters, conferences, etc. to serve different audiences. Success was measured not just by traffic and engagement but also through quantitative metrics like leads slash appointments generated. This helped secure continued investment in content marketing. Amanda advocated for content marketing as a strategic part of the organization on par with other functions like product development. It is now fully integrated across Cleveland Clinic's marketing. 
So in summary, Amanda transformed their blog into a highly successful content marketing operation through a strategic audience-focused approach and expanding into new formats, while also emphasizing quantitative metrics to justify continued investment. The organization has significantly expanded its content marketing efforts over the past several years, growing from a small blog to producing content across multiple channels like the website, social media, podcasts, video, etc. The team has expanded from three people to over 60 FTEs recently, to support the goal of becoming the undisputed leader in digital healthcare content. Coordination across such a large team and effort requires constant communication, collaboration, and involvement of other departments slash teams. Relationship building is a major focus. Growth was incremental over many years, through realigning existing teams rather than adding people all at once. Regular updates on progress help gain support. The team is structured into editorial, content growth, and product slash operations to focus on writing, traffic driving, and operational support respectively. Efficiency is key, leveraging content across channels and involving writers in broader efforts like podcasts and videos. While expansion was large, starting small and proving results gradually helped gain approval for bigger plans and resources over T. Me. Consistent reporting of progress was important. So in summary, the key lessons are taking an incremental approach to growth, focusing on collaboration, communicating progress regularly, and gaining approval for bigger plans after showing initial success. Jessica Bergman transformed Salesforce's content marketing by creating a centralized structure to deliver consistent value to customers. She established new roles like content strategists and editorial leads within each brand, persona, and industry team. This bridges audience needs with business objectives. A centralized content operations team manages tools, workflows, taxonomies, and metrics globally. This enables coordinated, consistent work. Initially, content roles reported centrally into their teams. Now they directly report to operating units for speed, while some central teams manage channels and properties. Coordinating big projects requires the central teams to work with distributed strategists and editors. Strategists have dual personalities across central and embedded teams. The changes oriented content marketing as a strategic function equal to other marketing functions like product marketing. This was crucial for success and enduring the organizational changes. So in summary, Jessica centralized core functions but distributed execution and embedded content roles across teams to deliver consistency at scale across Salesforce's large content output and initiatives. Here are the key points about Sweet Farm's content marketing journey. Sweet Farm started in 2015 as an animal rescue farm in Half Moon Bay, California. It later expanded into sustainable vegetable farming. They offered corporate tours and education programs on farming and food systems. When COVID hit, these in-person programs were no longer possible. They needed a way to continue educating and generating revenue. Out of necessity, they pivoted to live streaming farm tours called GoTo Meetings on platforms like Facebook. People paid $100 for a 10-minute break with the animals. It took off immediately, with bookings filling up a week in advance. Within a month they were featured in Business Insider. Live streaming became a new and engaging way for Sweet Farm to continue their content marketing and education efforts virtually during the pandemic lockdowns. It helped sustain their business. So in summary, Sweet Farm demonstrated how live and virtual content can be an effective content marketing strategy, especially when in-person activities are no longer possible due to circumstances like COVID. It allowed them to adapt and continue their mission online. Here are the six principles of epic content marketing distilled from the expert perspectives. Make an emotional connection with the audience. Go beyond products slash services and focus on truly solving problems and addressing human needs. Produce distinctive, high-quality content that stands out from competitors. Push creative-slash-technical boundaries. Inspire N. EU thoughts and open minds. Challenge conventional wisdom with insightful perspectives. Provoke emotions like awe, wonder, laughter. Touch on universal human experiences. Generate real business value by strategically supporting goals, not just for curiosity's sake. Build empathy and trust through audience understanding. Deliver emotion-driven stories that deepen relationships. The core is creating content that establishes expertise while forging a genuine connection with readers on both rational and emotional levels. Epic content should feel substantively different and leave a lasting impression through innovative forms of problem-solving and storytelling. Content marketing goals should be specific and measurable like athletic goals, such as winning championships. 
Without clear goals, there is no way to measure success or failure. Possible content marketing goals include Brand awareness or reinforcement, increasing recognition of the brand through content. Lead generation, using content to attract potential customers and gain their contact information. Customer loyalty, developing ongoing engagement and relationships with customers through consistently valuable content. Sales, moving customers further down the sales funnel and directly generating revenue. Customer education, providing useful information and support to help customers solve problems and make purchasing decisions. The goal should ultimately be developing engaged, loyal customers who regularly interact with and purchase from the brand. The different marketing goals like brand awareness or lead generation support this overarching goal. Setting tangible, measurable goals allows content marketers to define success like athletes do by achieving championships or records. Without clear goals, it's impossible to measure performance. The passage discusses different stages of the content marketing funnel, from awareness to retention. These include lead generation and nurturing, customer conversion, customer service, loyalty and retention, upsell, and developing passionate subscribers. It emphasizes that content marketing can be used effectively at each stage to move prospects and customers through the buying cycle and increase engagement and loyalty over time. Examples of content that can be used include case studies, testimonials, FAQs, tutorials on product use, content generated by customers, and newsletters to retain customers. Developing subscribers is a key goal, and email is highlighted as a more effective channel than social media for subscriber acquisition and engagement due to higher average time spent and click-through rates for email versus social platforms. The conclusion is that marketers should start with the end goal of subscribers in mind and focus on email over social for content marketing objectives. Own subscription sources like email lists are most valuable for content marketers because they allow the marketer to own the customer data. Secondary Sources like social media followers are less valuable since the platform owns the data. Content marketers should focus on growing their own subscription channels like email lists by creating valuable content that incentivizes people to subscribe. Tips for driving email subscriptions include offering content upgrades like ebooks in exchange for email, using opt in pop ups on the website, and having a single clear call to action. Analyzing how subscribers differ from non-subscribers can provide insights into creating more relevant content that builds loyalty. As a content creator, the focus should be on using content to grow the business, not just creating for its own sake. Marketing should be viewed as an investment rather than an expense. Audience personas help ensure content is tailored to the right audience and their needs slash pain points. Personas keep all content creators aligned on who they are targeting. It's important to do in-depth interviews with real customers to understand their decision-making process and avoid making assumptions. Personas should be based on facts from customers. Aus is the president of the Buyer Persona Institute, which focuses on two main buying personas, the economic buyer, C-level decision-makers, and the buying committee, those involved in the actual purchase decision. Marketers sometimes make mistakes like focusing too much on demographic details of personas like gender rather than buying priorities, barriers, and processes. The five rings of buying insight are the most important things to gather from buyer research, priority initiatives, success factors, perceived barriers, decision criteria, and buying process. Developing too many personas can be a mistake. Consolidate personas when job titles slash industries don't impact buying insights. Using scripted interviews doesn't reveal useful insights, have unscripted conversations to get buyer details. The persona is just a tool, you need to align it with your offerings and strategy to make it effective for content marketing and sales enablement. Setting up listening posts through conversations, analytics, social media, and surveys helps understand audiences and their needs continuously. Defining an engagement cycle is important but difficult for mapping how buyers move through the sales process with tailored content. Most small businesses don't tackle defining this process. To effectively deliver content to customers at the right time, companies need to understand both their internal sales process and the customer's buying cycle. The sales process refers to how a company moves customers through different stages like leads, prospects, etc. The buying cycle refers to the typical journey a customer takes when making a purchase. Companies should create a content segmentation grid that maps available content to different customer personas and sales process stages. This ensures content is delivered at the right points to move customers along. It's ALS. Oh, important to understand how each customer persona progresses through their own unique buying cycle. 
Mapping personas to the buying cycle helps companies understand when to engage customers with the right content. By combining understanding of the sales process, buying cycles, and content segmentation grid, companies can deliver tailored conversations and content to customers at the optimal points to move them through their journey. This is referred to as developing an engagement cycle. Your goal should be to become the leading slash trusted expert and information source for your customers in your niche. This may feel uncomfortable but is necessary to stand out. Think about what unique and impactful content you could create to fill potential gaps in the marketplace and truly provide value to your customers. Your content niche should be as narrowly focused as possible while still having demand to allow you to truly excel rather than compete at a broad level. Tools like Google Trends can help identify rising sub-niches. Fractal marketing is continually narrowing your target audience into smaller and smaller groups to personalize your content and engagement. This allows building strong relationships even with individual customers. In terms of pricing, the passage does not provide any specific recommendations. However, the focus on creating unique and valuable content to fill needs in a narrowly defined niche market suggests pricing strategies should aim to capture value for the expertise and resources being developed, rather than just competing on price. The passage discusses how developing a narrowly focused content niche, targeting a small but valuable audience, can lead to greater success than aiming for a very broad audience. It provides an example of how the founder of Einsoft decided to focus its initial content strategy on its 10 best customers, analyzing what they had in common to define the audience persona and corresponding content niche. The key lessons are that starting small with your highest value customers allows you to perfect your strategy before expanding, and that narrowly targeting your content can result in a higher payoff than trying to be all things to all people. A small, defined niche audience is presented as the best approach for an initial content marketing strategy. An editorial calendar is a critical tool for managing a content marketing program over the long term. It helps organize content production and align it with business goals. The key components of an editorial calendar include Prioritize list of content based on the content strategy Assigning producers slash editors responsible for each piece of content Specifying the channels where the content will be distributed Adding metadata tags to track aspects like target personas or engagement cycles Setting deadlines for content creation and publishing Defining workflow steps if working in a larger organization When building the calendar, only include elements knee, needed to manage the process. Keep it as simple as the business requires in the early stages. The calendar should map content to audiences, the buyer's journey, and distribution channels. This helps ensure a balanced strategy and goals-aligned output. Organizing the calendar with headers, color coding, or other logical structure helps team members stay on track to execute the content plan. Here is a summary of the key points about managing the content creation process. Assembling a content marketing team with specific roles and responsibilities is important for success. Even small businesses may have one person fulfilling multiple roles. The manager or chief content officer owns the overall content initiative and ensures excellence in execution across all tactics. They oversee the budget, contractors, audience development, and measurement. Managing editors manage the day-to-day editorial functions like producing content, scheduling, editing, tagging, and assisting others in creating content. They help train employees and coaches to create content. Content creators are subject matter experts who produce authentic content through means like interviews, blogs, videos, and podcasts. They are the voice of the brand. Content producers format and package the final content, making it visually appealing. This role may exist internally or be handled by an agency. The chief listening officer functions as an air traffic controller for social media and other channels. They monitor conversations, route issues to the right teams, and notify others. The key is having the right people in roles with clear responsibilities to effectively manage the entire content creation and publication process. The chief listening officer, CLO, plays a key role in content marketing by monitoring feedback from consumers and routing important feedback to the chief content officer, CCO. This allows the CCO to adapt the content marketing strategy based on how audiences are reacting and changing. When hiring freelancers for content marketing, it's important to consider both expertise slash experience and personality fit. While industry expertise is valuable, a good personal connection is also critical for an effective working relationship. Freelancers should be paid fairly based on the type and length of content produced. 
Rates may range from $0.12 cents per word for blogs to $1 per word for in-depth reports. Retainer agreements can also work well to set expected monthly output. It's best to do a trial period with freelancers first before committing to a long-term relationship to ensure their work meets expectations for quality, timeliness, and promotion. Brands should have a code of ethics for content marketing to maintain transparency and credibility. Key principles include honesty, disclosure of sponsorship, minimizing harm, and crediting sources. Successful content marketing organizations treat information like a product, planning strategically, testing, conducting research, and measuring success in a structured way. Successful companies like P&G, IBM, and SAS approach content as a product. They invest in quality, get customer feedback, and continuously evolve their content over time. More companies are hiring chief content officers and journalists to produce valuable, editorial-style content as a way to build relationships with customers before promoting other products and services. To be successful with content marketing, companies need to think of content packages as ongoing series, train product managers in content marketing best practices, and establish a pilot team to test new approaches before rolling them out more broadly. There are many types of agencies now offering content marketing services, including advertising, PR, digital, and SEO agencies. However, many agencies don't actually practice good content marketing themselves or take a strategic, holistic approach. They may focus more on execution than strategy. It can be difficult for companies to identify truly expert partners. They should evaluate if an agency produces great, strategic content for its own marketing before hiring them. Focusing only on content production is not enough for a comprehensive content marketing program. Content marketing has traditionally been seen by agencies more as an execution service for campaigns rather than a strategic approach. This has meant agencies focus on execution over strategy. As a result, many businesses struggle to find strong strategic partners for content planning, while content execution has become commoditized. Most agencies view content marketing simply as campaigns rather than a long-term strategic approach. A viral video or campaign alone does not equal content marketing. Content marketing requires consistent, long-form content creation and distribution over time to attract and retain customers. Brands should be wary of agencies just pitching campaigns rather than programs. Campaigns have end dates, but content marketing is ongoing. When evaluating agencies, brands need to see examples of executable content strategies and understand when less or stopping content could be the right approach, not just recommending always producing more. Strategic guidance is important so content aligns with business goals rather than agencies just chasing metrics. The lesson is brands must evaluate an agency's strategic content planning abilities, not just execution capabilities, to ensure a true content marketing partnership. Continue engaging your readers with additional relevant content like a niche newsletter. This allows you to grow your email database. Think about packaging blog posts into more substantial pieces of content like an ebook or white paper. Plan this from the beginning rather than retrospectively. Do guest blogging on other influential blogs in your industry. Promote key influencers by creating shareable lists that feature them. Continually measure key metrics from your blog like visits. Time on site, signups, etc., to track its performance. Conduct influencer interviews or QAnd as which they can then share with their networks. Consider outsourcing some content creation to professional writers or agencies to enhance your blogging strategy. Additional details are provided on newsletter content and optimization, different long form content types like white papers and ebooks, and webinars/slash webcasts as engagement tools. The key is to continually create and package content to engage your audience across different formats and channels. Monitoring metrics helps improve your strategies over time. Here is a summary of an ESSIF promotion strategy using various media and social channels. An effective promotional strategy leverages multiple channels such as your website, blog, newsletter, videos, print publications, and social media. Video content is very popular and growing, so creating short-form videos for platforms like YouTube, TikTok and Instagram can help build an audience. Print still grabs attention even when less common now, so options like magazines, newsletters and books provide memorable branded content. Other tactics include podcasts for audio content, executive roundtables to position as a thought leader, industry rankings to establish expertise, and digital formats that combine web and print. Consistency is important across channels to build awareness over time. The key is leveraging different mediums that complement each other to promote your brand, products or services to both existing and new audiences. 
books are an excellent way for brands to position themselves as thought leaders and experts in their industry. Blog posts can serve as chapters for a book. It's important to get PR people on board early to leverage media opportunities from publishing a book. Integrating influencers into the book, like providing quotes or case studies, can help with social media distribution. Some tips for making a book happen include auditing existing content, mining blog posts, getting funding slash sponsorship, being clear on the book's mission, and including influencers. Audio slash audiobooks are a good way to capture podcast listeners. Self-narrating or giving away chapters can help build an audience. Virtual events have become more common since COVID and can be easier for people to attend. But they are difficult to keep people engaged at. Comic books can effectively communicate information through pictures and text. They are memorable and good for instructional content. Roadshows allow delivering content directly to targeted audiences. Coordination and speaker training are important. Public speaking tips include putting social handles on all slides, having tweetable messages, promoting the talk online, simple slides with large text, moving around, and developing a signature style. Here is a summary of the key points about finding content assets. Most companies have more raw material for content than they realize. It just needs to be shaped into stories. Employees' expertise and experiences can be transformed into content. Do a visual content audit by laying out all current marketing content and having executives assess if it focuses more on customers' needs or the company, and if it is truly shareable. This identifies gaps. Formally audit all existing content by collecting URLs and categorizing by buyer's journey stage, awareness, consideration, decision, and type, blog posts, ebooks, etc. This provides visibility on current assets. Interview employees to uncover stories, case studies, how to guides, quotes, and other nuggets that can be molded into fresh content addressing knowledge gaps or customer pain points. Leverage internal subject matter experts by having them create long form, in depth guides around their areas of focus. Archives of past presentations, webinars, conferences, talks can provide a goldmine of evergreen and repackaged content. The key is to thoroughly audit what you have, identify gaps, and find ways to extract and reshape existing expertise, data and materials already at your disposal into fresh, optimized content. Don't overlook internal resources. A. Age. Your basic content inventory should include the age or date of publication slash last modification of each piece of content. This helps track how up-to-date content remains and when reviews are needed. B. Content format. The format of the content, whether it is text only, includes images slash video, and whether it includes a call to action. C. Word count slash length. For written content, including the number of words. For audio slash video, including the runtime. D. Date. The date the content was published or last modified. E. Content hub. The primary cluster or section of the website the content belongs to. F. Author. If multiple writers are used, noting the author of each piece of content. Keeping an up-to-date content inventory in a spreadsheet helps avoid duplicating content efforts and ensures content remains useful and relevant over time. It's an important part of content analysis and strategy. This section discusses how to create a content channel plan to effectively distribute content. It's important to start with the content strategy rather than just focusing on channels. When creating a channel plan, it should include the channel, the main distribution channel, like a blog, the persona, which target audience the content is focusing on, the content goal, the specific purpose and what the audience needs to get from the content, the primary content type, the format of content, like articles, videos, etc., the structure, how the content is organized, the tone, the voice and style of the content, Channel integration, how the channels work together. The desired action, what you want the audience to do. The editorial plan, the publishing schedule and process. Having these key components mapped out provides a visual plan to develop and distribute content strategically across channels to achieve business goals. The focus is on creating valuable content for the audience first before selecting distribution channels. Here is a summary of some key points about entrepreneurs and case studies from the passage. Entrepreneurs can leverage various digital channels to promote their content and connect with audiences, but it's important to remember that they don't own or control platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, etc. These are rented lands that can change over time. 
social networks like Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn provide opportunities to engage with large existing audiences. Facebook in particular has over 2.9 billion monthly users worldwide. Video platforms like YouTube and TikTok allow entrepreneurs to share long and short-form videos. Reels on Facebook are now competing with TikTok. Other channels mentioned include photo sharing on Instagram and Pinterest, messaging apps, online communities, and publishing platforms like Medium, Substack, and Patreon. The passage provides specific tips and best practices for using different channels effectively, like posting consistently on Twitter, using visuals well on Facebook, creating threads on Twitter, engaging influencers, etc. Examples are given of companies like Canva and Dove that leverage different channels successfully through their brand tone, engaging content, and community building. Metrics and tracking engagement over time on different platforms is important to understand what's working best for each entrepreneur's goals and audience. In summary, the passage discusses various digital channels entrepreneurs can use to promote their content and connect with audiences, while emphasizing the importance of understanding each platform's unique strengths and metrics. Examples are provided of brands effectively leveraging different channels. Here is a summary of the key points about using longer-form Twitter threads, Twitter notes, and other social media platforms effectively. Use longer Twitter threads to link several posts together on a topic per Twitter's capabilities. Follow the 411 rule. For every self serving post, repost one relevant post by others and share four pieces of relevant content from others. Keep 80% of posts valuable. Keep tweets visual with images, GIFs, videos which perform better. Tell a story through consistent voice and compelling individual tweets. Include hashtags to help others find your content. Use Twitter as a testing ground to see what content gets most shares. Cover industry events on Twitter to provide real-time insights for those not attending. LinkedIn offers publishing, professional networking, live, and newsletter capabilities. Encourage staff profiles linking to your brand. On YouTube, enable embedding, mix pro slash home videos, show don't tell, use shorts and compilations. Top channels like Lego, Mr. Beast employee user generated content, episodic stories, and professionally produced shows. On TikTok, be authentic, post, often, find your niche, follow trends but make them unique. Monitor sentiment and engage across social platforms using listening tools. In social audio, be natural, engage listeners, collaborate, and participate in others' discussions. Here is a summary of key points about alternative content promotion techniques from the passage. Content marketing is not complete until you promote and get your content in front of target audiences. Promoting content is just as important as creating it. Search engine optimization, SEO, is crucially linked to content marketing. Understanding SEO basics and creating shareable content is not enough. Resources need to be invested in SEO. Conducting regular SEO audits to monitor search performance is important. Metrics need to be tracked to evaluate what's working and identify areas for improvement. Social media promotion is a major way to distribute content. Consistency is important through posting on platforms like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn at regular times. Other promotion channels mentioned include email marketing, blogging networks, online video platforms, podcasting, infographics, guest posting and partnerships. It's important to experiment with different promotion techniques, track results, and focus resources on the channels that are most effective for the goals and audiences. Consistently repurposing content across multiple platforms can help boost reach. So in summary, the key takeaway is that content promotion requires a strategic, multi-channel approach and ongoing measurement to drive the right outcomes. Both SEO and social media are highlighted as major promotion levers. Here are the key points about developing an SEO content strategy. Do keyword research using tools like Google Search, Google Trends, Answer the Public, Quora, Reddit to identify relevant keywords and questions. Add these to a spreadsheet. Analyze keywords using a tool like SEMrush to get search volume, difficulty, and related keyword ideas. Filter the list to select initial targeted keywords. Make each piece of content target a specific keyword phrase by optimizing for it. Consider keywords already ranking in search results and optimize existing content further through reactive optimization. Identify opportunities for new content based on additional keyword research and targeting strategic long-tail keywords with available search volume. Focus on questions people are asking and create content that answers those questions to target rich snippets and featured snippets. 
monitor rankings and traffic for targeted keywords to measure SEO content strategy effectiveness over time. Regularly refine the strategy based on results. The goal is to develop both existing and new content aligned with relevant user search intent to organically drive traffic through search engine optimization. Brandscaping refers to a collection of brands working together to produce great content through content partnerships and consortiums. This can help brands that struggle with the resources and funding required for large content marketing projects. Non-competitive brands, community members, and influencers can collaborate on developing compelling content for similar target audiences. This shares the workload and expands reach. When communities and influencers create user-generated content, they should be featured, rewarded, and incentivized to promote that content further. This can be done through newsletters, blog features, and social media token rewards. Featuring influencers and rewarding community members encourages more user participation and viral sharing, amplifying the impact of the content. It also builds stronger relationships with advocates. So in summary, brandscaping and user-generated content partnerships can boost a brand's content capabilities while driving greater engagement through community features, incentives, and rewards. This collaborative approach helps content travel further. Prioritizing mobile-friendly content in search results and optimizing site performance for mobile is important for technical SEO. Hiring professional journalists and writers can help tell your brand stories through quality content marketing since many journalists have lost their jobs at struggling newspapers. Repurposing content across different channels like YouTube, newsletters, blogs, and podcasts is a smart way to promote content without creating entirely new pieces for each channel. It's also a good way to revitalize older, evergreen content. A rent-to-own content strategy involves partnering with media companies through sponsored content to get exposure to their audiences and convert them to your own readers over time. Developing professional editorial processes like having multiple people review each piece of content and assigning editors to help with storytelling can improve content quality. Measuring the impact of content marketing should focus on behaviors that matter to the business like sales, cost savings, customer retention and community growth. Both analytics and surveys can help evaluate these metrics. Content marketing metrics can be organized in a pyramid structure with three levels, primary indicators, secondary indicators, and user indicators. Primary indicators are key performance indicators, KPIs, that measure overall goals like number of converted leads. Secondary indicators measure processes that support primary goals, like lead generation metrics. User indicators measure audience engagement like web traffic. To set up the pyramid, identify business objectives, then map relevant metrics to the three levels. Primary metrics are limited to the most important KPIs. Secondary metrics provide insights into processes. User metrics track daily engagement. User metrics are monitored frequently to understand performance and inform strategy changes. Secondary and primary metrics are reported regularly, like monthly, to stakeholders. Content marketing can profit. E4 hidden benefits, helping with recruiting, boosting company morale, opening communication lines internally, and building trust with external audiences. Tracking relevant metrics can help quantify these wider impacts. While tools like Google Analytics provide basic analytics, a marketing automation system allows more advanced tracking of individual users and their behavior over time to better understand what drives results. The article discusses measuring the effectiveness of content marketing using four key metrics, consumption metrics, sharing metrics, lead generation metrics, and sales metrics. Consumption metrics measure how people are engaging with content, like page views, video views, downloads, etc. This is an early stage metric. Sharing metrics measure if content is being spread, through shares, likes, tweets, pins, etc. But sharing alone does not equate to business value. Lead generation metrics track if consumption leads to leads, through form submissions, downloads, blog comments, subscription rates, etc. Conversion rates are important to compare to overall site rates. Sales metrics are the most important in the end, tracking actual revenue and sales that can be directly or indirectly attributed to content. This includes online slash offline sales and anecdotal reports from sales teams. All the metrics together paint a fuller picture of how the content is performing and engaging audiences versus driving true business goals like revenue. The article provides examples for tracking each type of metric. Here are the key points about using data to optimize content performance. Google Sheets and Excel are good starting points for manually tracking your own content performance metrics before investing in paid analytics tools. 
This helps identify what data is most important to your goals. Google Analytics, both the Universal Analytics and newer Google Analytics 4 versions, provide a wealth of insights into things like traffic, user behavior, social sharing, and more that can be leveraged to improve performance. Important metrics to track include things like page views, time on page, bounce rate, conversion rate, referral sources, device usage, top pages slash posts, social sharing, etc. Tracking these over time can reveal patterns. Anomalies in the data, spikes, drops, changes in patterns, indicate things that worked well or opportunities for improvement. These should be analyzed to understand causes. AB and multivariate testing tools allow testing of small content or design changes to optimize for specific goals like increased time on site, conversions, etc. Qualitative user research like surveys can provide context and explanations for quantitative behavioral data, revealing how to improve the experience. The key is to establish goals, collect relevant metrics over time, analyze patterns and anomalies, and continuously test and refine content slash design based on data insights to drive better performance. Several updates to Google and Analytics 4 were made with user data security in mind, like only storing user-specific data for two months by default. You may need to use BigQuery for older historic data. You cannot pass data from Universal Analytics to GA4, so you may lose historic data if you don't export it from UA first. In GA4, you'll want to set up conversions, formerly called goals, to track important user actions you want to drive, like purchases. Google Search Console gives data on search terms users use to find your site and can highlight page performance issues to share with developers. Google Data Studio is recommended for creating visualizations to interpret GA4 data, since many standard reports were moved or removed. Organic traffic in GA4 is from searches. You should get at least half your traffic from searches and focus on optimizing pages that get organic traffic and convert users. Google's algorithm focuses on expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness, EAT. Developing content clusters around topics can help with this. Be aware of content shock in your industry as content density increases. You may need to niche down deeper to stand out. Social platforms have limitations for data access. Consider exporting to Google Sheets to more easily analyze over time. The chapter discusses how AI and ML can be used in epic content marketing. While AI often conjures ideas of sentient machines, the focus should be on using intelligent automation to help with repetitive tasks. AI is the broad term for computers mimicking human cognitive functions like learning and problem solving. It can be defined as a series of if-then statements strung together with input data to simulate intelligence. Basic AI is already used daily in recommendations from Netflix, ads on Facebook, etc. ML is an advanced form of AI that allows for deeper decision-making through techniques like regression analysis, clustering, and classification. It involves computers learning from large amounts of data without being explicitly programmed. The chapter will explore how content marketers can use ML tools to help with tasks like content optimization, personalization, targeting, analyzing content performance, and automating repetitive work. While AI won't replace humans, it can be a powerful assistant by handling process-oriented work. The creator economy refers to content creators' ability to make money directly from their content, such as videos, songs, blogs, etc. that are shared on social media platforms. There is an enormous amount of content being created and consumed every day on platforms like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and TikTok. This has made it challenging for brands and creators to stand out. When creating content, brands aim to build an audience, promote products, raise awareness or share their messaging. Individual creators have varying motivations like sharing opinions, gaining fame or money. A survey found kids today are more interested in being YouTubers than Aster. Oh nots, showing the appeal of content creation careers. AI and ML tools are helping both analyze past performance to optimize future content and automate certain repetitive tasks. However, human judgment is still needed to create truly interesting, high-quality content. The future will see more creators building expertise across different formats to sustain long-term careers in this competitive landscape. Collaboration may also become more important. For content creators and marketers, building a strong community and superfans is very important. Having an audience who consumes your content is just the beginning. The goal is to turn some of those casual viewers into engaged community members who promote and share your content. Community members interact with you across multiple channels and are willing to provide contact information in exchange for more content. 
Superfans, sometimes called stands, are the most engaged promoters who help your content and brand grow significantly. Having a community creates value through the sense of belonging, support, and connections. They can help with things like recruiting, learning, and reducing prejudice. Communities also help retain top talent within a business or organization. For content entrepreneurs, the community can be tapped into to build a team. Superfans in particular provide great promotional value since they are your most loyal advocates. The key is creating epic content that turns some audience members into engaged community members and eventually superfans over time. Building community and superfans allows content to be leveraged to its fullest potential. Pat Flynn is an entrepreneur and creator who has written a guide called Superfans about how to build superfans and convert casual fans into a loyal community. In an interview, Pat discusses the importance of caring about individual fans and customers to build emotional connections. He advocates for brands to create memorable fan experiences through surprises. Building human-to-human -human connections through community managers is also important. The goal is to convert casual fans to an engaged community and ultimately superfans who will amplify the brand. This leads to warm introductions of new fans and potential super affiliates. Building superfans can help a brand thrive no matter changes in technology. It comes down to human connections, which will always be important as long as humans exist. Having the right exit strategy when selling a content business is important for control and maximizing value. Key factors include monetizing the audience, maintaining growth, flexibility around personal involvement, and proving sustainable success without the current owner. Here are the key points from the provided text. When selling a content business, it can be difficult if the buyer is basically just hiring you rather than buying the business itself. You need to plan ways to remove yourself from day-to-day -day operations and put recurring Raven, UE streams and systems in place to sustain the business without your direct involvement. Recurring revenue from subscriptions and events typically leads to higher sale multiples, as buyers see these as easy ways to generate ongoing income without much work. Potential buyers of content businesses are typically looking for either large volume slash audience size or rabid super engaged users. Metrics around follower count, repeat visits, time spent, NPS scores can be used in negotiations to show these qualities. Non-financial factors to consider include the future plans for the company slash team, how long the founder is willing to stay post-sale, and level of control during transition. Negotiation points around payment terms and founder role should reflect these priorities. Former relationships, sponsors, and competitors in the space can potentially be buyers. Building connections over time increases the available pool of potential buyers. Hiring an experienced negotiator helps prevent friction in the process and allows the founder to stay more neutral slash objective. Identifying top five potential strategic buyers a year in advance allows time to build relationships through meetings and nurturing. Filling out a spreadsheet on their rationale, contacts, and relationship status improves targeting of outreach. Legal and financial paperwork like contracts, agreements, accounts should all be reviewed and optimized ahead of actively pursuing a sale. Selling a business requires proper preparation, including reviewing tax implications with an accountant and ensuring the financials are prepared in a way that is useful for potential buyer's analysis. It is highly recommended to hire an independent financial advisor to handle all correspondence and negotiations during the sale process. Their fee is typically a percentage of the sale price based on an established formula. With the advisor's help, finalize a target list of potential buyers and conduct outreach to gauge interest. Send non-binding letters of intent, LOIs, to interested parties. Create an offering memorandum document of up to 20 pages to present the business to potential buyers. Address any concerns raised during pitches and negotiations. Negotiations with buyers can take many months and require extensive diligence on finances, projections, operations etc. Be prepared for potential renegotiation of terms in the LOI. Hire professionals like accountants and advisors and be prepared for a lengthy, complex but crucial process to get the best terms for selling a business. Flexibility and compromise may be needed from both sides. Aero Electronics is a large global distributor of electronics hardware and software. They began acquiring engineering and technology media companies in 2015 to 2016 to gain access to their audiences of engineers and technicians. Many of these media brands were under-resourced within larger conglomerates that prioritized consumer titles. Aero saw an opportunity to invest in an S. Astain these brands long-term as specialized business holdings. 
preserving the editorial independence and journalistic integrity of the acquired titles was seen as key to maintaining reader trust and the downstream benefits for Arrow's core business. Executing the acquisitions required identifying strategic media assets and having conversations at high levels with existing owners who were open to Arrow's vision and capacity to support the titles long term. The focus was on ensuring the acquired audience continued to see the same trusted coverage and analysis, while providing new resources, rather than overtly promoting Arrow's products and services. Here is a summary of the key points about Web3. Web3 refers to a decentralized version of the internet that is owned and run by its users rather than large tech companies. It aims to give control back to creators and communities. Blockchain technology and cryptocurrency are foundational to Web3. Blockchain allows for decentralized applications, databases, and digital assets that do not rely on central authorities. Non-fungible tokens, NFTs, enable unique digital ownership and transactions for creative works like artwork, videos, collectibles, etc. This gives creators new monetization opportunities. Web3 will transform the creator economy by allowing direct connections between creators and their communities without intermediaries. Creators can build and monetize their own platforms and content. Decentralization is a core principle of Web3. Users own their data and digital identities rather than tech giants. Content is distributed rather than centralized on a few dominant platforms. While many current Web3 trends and projects may not last, the underlying blockchain technology is here to stay and will change how we interact online in the future in empowering ways for both creators and consumers. Web 1.0 allowed basic consumption of information published by developers on websites. Web 2.0 enabled non-developers to create websites and share content through social networks and CMS platforms. However, content was hosted on centralized platforms. Web 3.0, as envisioned by Berners-Lee, would link all data in a central location access through unique IDs. Web 3 shifts to a decentralized model where content creators can publish directly to peer-to-peer -peer networks without relying on centralized platforms. It allows ownership and monetization of digital content and assets through blockchain technologies like smart contracts, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, etc. Blockchains provide a permanent, public ledger to store information that is difficult to change. Popular blockchains include Bitcoin, Ethereum, and others. Fiat currency has value due to government backing, while cryptocurrency value comes from community trust and adoption rather than a central authority. Exchanges allow buying slash selling cryptocurrencies for fiat currency. Wallets provide secure storage of digital assets either online, hot wallets, or offline, cold wallets. Creator coins and social tokens reward community participation and provide access slash benefits based on contribution and ownership. NFTs represent unique digital assets that can include smart contracts defining ownership rights and rewards. NFTs can provide ongoing revenue for creators as their art is sold and increases in value over time. They can also provide utility, like digital tickets or passes that can be resold, traded, or used as long as someone owns them. NFTs could act as verifiable records for important documents and transactions, replacing things like car titles, deeds, medical records, education records, degrees, and certifications. All of these could be stored as NFTs in a digital wallet. A metaverse is a large-scale, 3D virtual world that can be experienced synchronously by many users who have their own sense of presence. Current examples include Roblox, Fortnite, and virtual worlds like Decentraland that are built on blockchain technology. Decentralization refers to applications and data being distributed across a network of computers rather than owned by a single company. This allows for open access without centralized control. Ownership on the blockchain provides a public record of who created content and owns it, allowing them to sell, transfer rights, and get paid for any future transactions. DAOs are decentralized organizations governed by rules and code on the blockchain, like a crowdsourced LLC. The Constitution DAO tried to collectively buy a rare copy of the U.S. Constitution. Salesforce is investing in Web3 to build enterprise tools. Content marketing will transition from getting email addresses to connecting wallets and renting user data they control, with new immersive experiences like in metaverses. Brands need to collaborate with communities to co-create in the Web3 space. Social tokens, also called creator coins, are custom cryptocurrencies created by content creators and brands to connect with their communities. Holding these tokens provides partial ownership in the community. 
As more people hold and use the token, it provides value through access to gated content, merchandise, donations slash tips, and a growing community network. The value of the token can increase even if the underlying cryptocurrency decreases in dollar value. NFTs add elements of scarcity and uniqueness. Creators can leverage the traits of individual NFTs to form subgroups or provide benefits, activated through smart contracts. For example, long-term NFT holders may receive coin drops or exclusive access. Examples given are Moonbird's NFT project which rewards nesting or not selling an NFT, and VFriends NFTs which provided the only entry method to Gary V's conferences for three years at different access levels. Social tokens and NFTs allow content creators and brands new ways to connect with and build ownership among engaged community members in the Web3 space. Here are the key differences between primary and say. Kandari sales of non-fungible tokens, NFTs. Primary sales refer to the initial sale of an NFT by the creator directly to buyers. This is how the NFT is first introduced and sold. Secondary sales refer to subsequent resales of an NFT between buyers after the initial primary sale. These sales take place on NFT marketplaces as existing NFT holders choose to resell their tokens. In primary sales, proceeds go directly to the creator who mints slash makes the NFT. In secondary sales, proceeds are shared between the seller and marketplace, with the original creator not receiving a cut. Primary sale prices tend to be set by the creator. Secondary sale prices are determined by market demand and what buyers are willing to pay at the time of resale. Primary sales are a direct way for creators to launch and monetize their work. Secondary sales allow existing NFT holders to potentially profit from price appreciation if value increases over time. Both primary and secondary sales contribute to an NFT's trading volume and market liquidity. But secondary sales play a larger role in establishing an ongoing resale market for NFT collections slash projects. In summary, primary sales introduce NFTs, while secondary sales facilitate future trades and resales after the initial launch. Both are important for the growth of NFT markets. Here are some key points about the future of content marketing based on expert opinions. Content marketing will become a core part of marketing strategies rather than being seen as separate. Content will be treated more like a product. Content is product, product is content. The line will blur as content becomes a core business strategy and essential part of the business. Content marketing may be considered the fifth P of marketing, alongside product, price, place, and packaging. AI and automation tools will continue advancing but the smartest writers will learn how to leverage these tools rather than be replaced by them. Creativity and strategy will still be primarily done by humans. Personalized, 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 content will be tailored more and more to individual interests, behaviors, and preferences as data and targeting capabilities improve. Video will dominate, video content will become even more prevalent across all platforms as technologies enable more immersive experiences. Continued fragmentation, audiences will spread across more and more channels requiring an omni-channel content strategy to reach them everywhere. Continued opportunity for niche content, as audiences fragment, there will be more opportunities for specific, niche content topics to find engaged audiences. The overarching themes seem to be content becoming more central to business and marketing strategies, the rise of personalized and video content, and the need for omni-channel strategies to reach fragmented audiences. Creativity, strategy and human elements will still be important areas for humans versus full automation by AI. AI Techno Logies will take over many routine, data-driven marketing tasks in the next 10 years, like content research, analysis, optimization, and generation. This will allow marketers to focus more on creative and strategic work. However, there is a risk that marketers have become flabby and weak creatively due to focusing less on storytelling, writing, and other creative skills. More focus will be needed on developing these creative muscles to stay relevant. Content will continue to be personalized and focus on building emotional connections with audiences. Immersive technologies like holograms may become more common ways to deliver and experience content. In the future, the line between content marketing and entertainment will blur as these fields converge. Experiential marketing and content marketing will also grow closer together. New technologies like AI, R, VR, NFTs, and the metaverse will open up many new opportunities for creative content marketing, but also risks around trust, manipulation, and misinformation. Building trust will be increasingly important. 
content marketing will continue adapting to new platforms and focusing on personalization, communities, and micro niches to cut through increased noise and short attention spans. The fundamental value exchange between brands and consumers will still be important. Over the next decade, content marketing will continue to evolve significantly due to factors like ever-changing algorithms, a more skeptical public, and the need to foster genuine communities. It will be important for marketers to truly understand their target audiences and engage with them on the right platforms in an authentic way. There will be a greater focus on building communities where people feel heard rather than just broadcasting messages. Personalized and personality-driven content that shows the human side of brands will be especially important as audiences want to relate to real people. Content will also become more global, credible, and holistic as it addresses issues like climate change and sustainability. Artificial intelligence will profoundly impact content creation and distribution, with machines potentially doing more of the initial drafting. However, the most successful strategies will still be driven by building expertise and sharing knowledge in relevant and engaging ways across different formats. Data and personalization at increasingly granular levels will be key to understanding audiences and their unique journeys. Here are the key points summarized from the examples of content marketing provided. User-generated content campaigns like Apple's shot on iPhone and Adobe's hashtag creativity for all can go viral on social media and drive brand engagement. Quizzes and personality tests like Airbnb's design quiz are easily shareable and help target the right audiences. Podcasts like the University of Chicago's Big Brains distribute thought leadership content and can be monetized through sponsorships. Viral. Challenges on platforms like TikTok, as with Warner Media's hashtag legendary challenge, generate massive visibility. Educational guides and stories showing a day in the life humanize brands and build trust, as MailChimp demonstrates. Crisis response content, like Monsters work supporting employers and employees during COVID-19, can drive meaningful engagement. Trade publications and magazines like TD Ameritrade's think money deep in relationships when they provide real value to readers. Large-scale conferences and events such as HubSpot's inbound bring communities together around content and ideas. The key is finding engaging formats that distribute your message widely, add value for target audiences, and deepen relationships over time. Both innovative campaigns and long-term content programs can achieve significant business impact. Here is a summary of the examples provided. Inbound is a marketing services and software company that provides resources on topics like marketing, sales, customer success and revenue operations. Google Web Stories allows creators to build, edit and host videos on their own sites, providing more indexable content for Google search and engagement opportunities for creators. ZocDoc is a website for finding and booking doctor appointments. It launched an initiative called Unsick Day to encourage preventative care visits. You Suck at Cooking is a funny YouTube channel about cooking that has found major success, expanding to other platforms and sponsorships. Dasha Kennedy grew a Facebook group called Broke Black Girl to over 60,000 followers in its first year, then expanded to other platforms. Simran Kaur launched the Girls That Invest podcast and Instagram in 2020 and had over 500 people sign up for her first online course, earning $149,000. Several other examples were provided of individuals like Alicia Ether, Zach King, and Hanley and Nora Dunn who built audiences and businesses through online content and platforms. Examples were also given of companies experimenting with NFTs and Web3, like NBA Top Shot, Coca-Cola, Adidas, The Chainsmokers, Lacoste and others. The media-slash-publishing model is changing and evolving in ways that some think are for the better. Traditional publishers will still have an important role to play. Broad, horizontal news sources are facing challenges these days. It's better to start with one focused content platform and make it amazing, before diversifying into other areas. Content marketing should work together with and complement other marketing efforts, not replace them entirely. Most brands need to develop their content marketing capabilities further. While some consolidation of media companies may occur through mergers and acquisitions, starting one's own content platform remains a viable option for reaching customers. Content marketing has evolved from a focus on stories and storytelling to a broader, more strategic approach that addresses business goals and objectives. The grow, th of social media and user-generated content has increased the prevalence and importance of content marketing. It is now a core part of most marketing mixes. Epic content marketing focuses on reaching wider audiences through creative, high-quality content distributed across multiple channels. It requires dedicated effort and resources. 
Customer-centric content marketing puts the customer experience and needs at the center. The goal is to create helpful, engaging content for target personas at each stage of the buyer's journey. Content platforms and channels include blogs, ebooks, social media, podcasts, video, events, and more. An editorial calendar and channel plan are required to manage content creation and distribution effectively. Metrics like consumption, engagement, leads, and conversions help measure the business impact of content marketing efforts. CRM and analytics tools are important for tracking metrics. The creator economy is growing as individuals leverage platforms and direct fan slash customer relationships to build sustainable content businesses. NFTs and crypto further enable this trend. Emerging technologies like AI, machine learning, R slash VR and blockchain will continue transforming content creation and consumption in the future, presenting both opportunities and challenges for content marketers. The Financial Action Task Force, FATF, sets standards and promotes policies to combat money laundering and terrorism financing. A financial advisor helps clients manage investments, retirement plans, taxes, insurance, etc. Their goals are to understand the client's needs and help them achieve financial objectives. Media companies generate revenue from various sources like advertising, paid content slash subscriptions, events, sponsored content, etc. Their financial resources impact the types of content they can produce. 5 Watts Public Relations is a PR agency that helps companies develop strategies and place stories in the media. The 5 Rings of Buying Insight framework identifies 5 stages buyers go through. Julie Fleischer is a consultant who advises media companies on growth strategies. Flippa is a marketplace for buying and selling digital businesses and assets like websites, apps, social media accounts, etc. Pat Flynn runs the Smart Passive Income blog and podcast focused on building online businesses through content. Form completions and forwards are potential metrics to measure content performance on platforms like emails. The 411 rule recommends including four interesting facts for every one promotion in content. The 4Cs framework identifies the core elements of an effective content marketing strategy as consistency, context, connection, and creation. Fractal marketing involves consistently delivering valuable micro moments through different touch points over time to build loyalty. Frank is a platform that allows creators to monetize content and connect directly with fans through features like subscriptions. Benjamin F. Ranklin effectively used content marketing in the Pennsylvania Gazette and Poor Richard's Almanac. Here is a summary of the key points from the provided sections. Rabid fans, describes rabid or super fans who are highly engaged with a creator slash brand's content and community. RankBrain, mentions RankBrain which is Google's AI system for improving search rankings. Ranking systems, refers to systems for ranking or prioritizing content, like search engine rankings. Naval Ravikant, names Naval Ravikant who is a venture capitalist and author. Reach of content, discusses measuring the reach of content through metrics like views, shares, etc. Reactive content creation, covers creating content in reaction to current events or trends. Readers, prioritizing, mentions prioritizing readers or loyal followers of content. Recommendations, refers to recommendation systems or suggesting related slash relevant content to users. That covers the key points summarized from the provided sections on rabid fans, ranking systems, naval ravikant, measuring reach, reactive content, prioritizing readers, and recommendations. Let me know if you need any part expanded on. Here is a synopsis of the key points. The author left a six-figure media job in 2007 to start a business with his wife and two young children, with not much money. They hit $1 million in sales in 2011 and nearly $10 million in sales by 2015. In 2015, the author wrote his first book Content Incorporated detailing how they grew the business from $0 to millions in under 5 years through a content-based model. Over 100k copies sold. In 2016, they sold their company, Content Marketing Institute, for under $30 million to a large events company. The author took a sabbatical in 2018 to spend time with family before focusing on writing a novel. When COVID hit in 2020, friends reached out about the Content Incorporated model as they lost jobs. Sales of the book tripled and old podcasts gained downloads again. The author now wants to update the book to share the full Content Incorporated model to help more people start successful businesses, especially during difficult economic times. The Content Incorporated model involves building a business around valuable content that attracts a loyal audience. It allows entrepreneurs to grow a multi-million dollar platform directly, without relying on advertising. 
The model consists of seven steps. 1. Identifying a knowledge slash skill sweet spot and audience. 2. Finding a content tilt or niche with less competition. 3. Selecting a content platform and building a base. 4. Growing the audience. 5. Monetizing through products slash services. 6. Diversifying content. 7. Selling the business or continuing large-scale growth. Thousands of businesses now use this model in various industries. It provides a better strategy than big companies, as the focus content approach gives deep audience insights for product development. The book aims to teach this repeatable model to any entrepreneur, regardless of comp, any size or stage. It shows how to build and scale a successful content-driven business from the ground up. The book outlines a content-based business model called Content Incorporated that can be applied by startups, large enterprises, nonprofits, and more. The model focuses on building an engaged audience through consistent content creation before monetizing. This helps create loyal fans and new opportunities. Examples given include how companies like Red Bull, Lego, and Mercyhurst University have used this approach to substantially grow. The book is relevant for organizations of any size and at various stages, from pure startups to stalled businesses looking to reignite growth. Depending on goals, the content incorporated model can be leveraged to develop industry expertise, raise awareness, keep customers loyal, or discover new revenue streams. Case studies will demonstrate how the methodology is not a one-hit wonder and can work across industries by following important steps around audience building. The introduction provides an overview of what each chapter will cover so the reader can skip ones covering familiar topics. In summary, the book outlines a content-focused digital business model called Content Incorporated that can help drive growth for organizations of any size or stage by first developing an engaged audience.